through the teepees. Where's your teepees? We're going to have a good day today, Ted. We're going to go to Yaxley. We're going to go see Grandpa Piers. Yeah, we are. Not just yet, though, OK? Good morning, guys. This week is... So the last vlog was last night. The last vlog. <laughs> you know, cutie. You're being a cutie. I think he's a performer now for the camp. Stop licking my laptop, please. So, let me start again. The last vlog I put out was last night. It ended with last night's um, prayer and worship evening. And then today we're going to spend some time at my mum and her husband's house. I go there mm, every other week, if not every week. It's a really healthy habit that we get into where because me and James are with each other a lot you know we we work together he works from home I'm in the home we were at church together it's we're we're with each other a lot so it's it's really healthy and nice to have that breathing space I'll take you along today god bless you <laughs> I never even imagined that could happen. <laughs> okay, let's go. I've just left James a little love note. I haven't normally done this very much. I think that it's something I need to continue to do a bit more. <sighs> anyway, let's get going. Teddy, you want to go see Grandpa Pierce today? Yeah? <laughs> That's a good boy, stay. Stay. Go on then. <laughs> Teddy. Be nice. Teddy, no. Whoa, she snort. She snorted at him. Teddy, no. That's enough. Okay, they've just gone to pick up my cousin and uh, then we're going to go for our lovely walk. I also love coming home because I revert back to being a kid again and I don't do like the house chores that I normally do at home and stuff. So I get fed here and everything. It's so nice. And this is what they've left me. So I arrive here and this is my beautiful lunch. So nice. <laughs> 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 you know when we start at that part and then we walk around. Teddy. <laughs> <laughs>
thank you for this food. Thank you for family and time together. And Lord, I pray that your peace would be upon this house and that you'd guide all of our lives into the right way, Lord. And I pray for Millie. When it comes to finding a job, Lord, I pray that you go before her and you make her a path for the right job, Lord, and keep her safe. And bless you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Just went for a little walk with my best mate. She came over with her two kiddos. Uh, she's also pregnant as well, bless her. She's got two young ones and she's pregnant and she came round. Um, this is the friend that we've been praying for for a long time. The one that lived in Canada and uh, I put it on the prayer team that she had moved back to England. So she lives literally two minutes up from my mum's house in the same village that we, you know, grew up together in. And it's just so nice to see her. And yeah, we've spoken about the Lord together as well. She believes... Um, She's yet to have an encounter with the Lord, but um, if you could continue to pray for her, I'd really appreciate it. Her name's Michelle, and uh, yeah, just had a little walk with her and the kids, and it's been really nice. So this is the following day, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not very good at keeping up with the vlogs. It's Friday today, so yeah, I'll take you along for the Sunday, uh, this Sunday, because it's going to be bring and share, and yeah, it should be a good one. He wants to see what you're doing. <laughs> nice one, darling. <laughs> yeah, you should do that bit. And... <laughs> you should do that bit. <laughs> oh, that's oh, nice. he's been a good boy with you. Are they? Where are they? They're, they're coming. Is it your friends? I'll take you along to church today. I'm covering my hair because it looks. <laughs> this is how I try and curl it. So, today we're on our way to church. It's going to be the fellowship meal today. We put a few flyers out or like thumbnails out to see if we can have some more visitors today. So, hopefully, apparently, we've got a woman bringing her little. Um, is it Dash Out? Dash Out called Charlie. A little Dash Out called Charlie. We don't usually have dogs in the church, but apparently, this one's really well behaved and goes to church with her every Sunday. He's regular church goer every week. <laughs> Christian Dash Out. Think about that. I'll try and get a bit of video footage to show you guys. But yeah, it'll be lovely. It's a fellowship meal, and um, James, you're doing the sermon today, aren't you? I am. We're going to be hearing about Zacchaeus, the Jewish tax collector who climbs the tree to see Jesus. being nailed to a cross, but there's one thing being nailed to a cross when you're totally innocent 
and not found guilty. Even one piece said, well, I deserve this. Jesus didn't deserve it. But there's a demonstration of love. That he got on the cross. But he didn't have to. Now, salvation is a free gift. Intellectual ascent, having the knowledge, like the Gnostics, is not good enough. If you're a professing Christian here this morning, that is not good enough. Knowledge is not enough. You need to apply it. Now, a holy life in a dark and perverse generation is the greatest challenge we have as Christians. A persecution. But to walk out a holy life in a world that is decaying, can you walk the walk? Now, how do I accept this free gift? Paul says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will live differently. Yeah, you'll be saved, but will you live differently? As a derogatory term, they called them the repenters. What a badge of honor, isn't it? Mm -hmm. See, the word Christian was used as a... Whose phone is that? Sorry. Get out. No. I thought it was Charlie's phone. Charlie's a little dash hound over there. Now, the word Christian was used in this context as well. You are those Christians. You are those Christian people. Yeah. <laughs> That's us now. We know we're at a badge of honor. We're the Christian now. We, we to pick up our cross now. Somebody asked me the other day, shouldn't you be wearing a cross here? I said, no, if we're real Christians, we wear the cross on our backs. Again. <laughs> we should always carry our cross on our back. Now the Lord is saying this. For I know the thoughts I have towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. The enemy is saying to you, you've got your salvation, that's enough. You don't need any more. Jesus said, I've got a lot more for you. Can you hear my voice? You don't want to leave this earth and slip into eternity, and God's saying, I had so much more for you, but you were not willing to listen. Yet the ears closed. Can you hear me directing you at this point? You missed out on all of these things that I have for you. Relationships, conversations, blessings, I have them for you. yesterday say hello mate <laughs> she's gone camera shy yeah. Grace, say hello mate hello mate <laughs> <laughs> hello mate say again hello mate hello mate how are you <laughs> so ma'am we're just going to tell people on youtube what we came from and what we are now in the lord just to kind of just share how good god is I know it's quite a, a touchy subject, I mean. That's a big one, yeah. so on the spot. Um, you start then. <laughs> so, um, well, I mean, I think most people know my, my uh, 
testimony, but I came from broken and despairing and dark background, practicing witchcraft and just so lost. And then the Lord came and restored everything in me and gave me freedom and then a relationship with you as well. Miracle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, what was your VC days like, Mum? Oh, a little bit wild. Um, <laughs> I was quite easily led, really. Uh, when I came back from America, I went in America for 10 years when I was younger. And I was really devastated by a miscarriage. And I had been a Christian for a while there, but then I decided I just couldn't... I didn't want Chelsea's dad. I left Chelsea's dad and I left everything. I left everything behind, I shut the door completely on God. I was angry, I was hurt, I was confused, I was just a bit of a mess and oh I just got into relationships that were not healthy, uh, I was drinking, I was doing things I don't really want to talk about in front of my daughter. I know um, it anyway. Just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we <probably> do. <laughs> Small village. <laughs> um, and I, I made friendships with some people that didn't really, it wasn't really best for me. Um, got me in, into a really worldly life, not blaming people, because you know, I went along willingly, but I just did things that hadn't been natural to me before. And I just went down some really dark paths. And, um, and uh, of course, you know, I turned my back on God and I think a veil had come down because I didn't, I didn't feel any shame, none at all, and no shame, no conviction, no conviction, nothing, it. nothing at all, and you know I was happy. I met the man of my dreams eventually, and we got married, and you know we were so happy, and within months of that marriage, I had an encounter, and. Um, Still can't talk about it. Oh, Mum. It's okay, I can cut this bit out. <laughs> I had an encounter in my dining room while setting the table for dinner. I mean, just a really normal everyday activity. And um, I heard something on the news, and I just had the sudden realization that everything I'd known before, 20, over 20 years before, that it was true and I just blurted out most unlike me as I hadn't mentioned or thought of God for 20 years oh my god it's all true and it hit me like a ton of bricks that veil that I'd asked for actually you know I'd walked away but that veil that had come down between me and God where I hadn't thought about him at all blew wide open and it's like those 20 years hadn't happened and I was back, I had my faith, but it was much different. What had been a childlike faith when I was 16, um, 17, 18, living in America, 21 when Chelsea was born, was now a uh, serious um, desire to know the truth. And I needed a Bible now, I needed to know it all now, and I got all in a fluster thinking, <gasps> you know, it's, has God called me back now because it's such a time as this? And I thought, oh, you know, I need to know everything now, I need to know all the end time stuff, I need to know everything right now. <laughs> Which, of course, is crazy because <laughs> that stuff's for down, you know, it's, baby Christians need to be milk. And so I was trying to go in there with a the big steak dinner, <laughs> trying to figure out what, what, what I'd missed in the last 20 years. but. It was all right, God was gracious, and slowly but surely, um, I started to stop panicking and actually uh, spend some time figuring out what it is I actually needed, which was a Bible and also a church. And then it was a search for a church. Meanwhile, my little girl <laughs> came home from her travels and thought her mama had gone crazy. <laughs> yeah. What was already a very difficult relationship. Oh, sorry, yeah. No, no, it's fine. I mean, I've mentioned it briefly on here before. We became really, because I was during the frantic period of thinking, you know, Jesus was returning tomorrow and I needed to get my family saved and I'm 
telling Chelsea and showing all these charts and writing and telling her, oh, you know, you need to know Jesus. And, and I was on antidepressants and anxiety tablets at that yeah, time because I was like, uh, I think I had a bit of a mental breakdown at that point, didn't I? And I came home because I was suicidal and everything. And then I thought my mum was the crazy one. Yeah. So then I left I and I... think frightened her a little. Well, it, was all, it all worked out how the Lord planned it. You she know? couldn't get away there, could you? I, I was a bit... Stay. I left and went and lived in a cave. For some reason, I thought that would have been better. <laughs> She couldn't stand to be around me. I was, I was having like, heart palpitations. I'd rather be in a cave. <laughs> no, I was having heart palpitations before you had like doomsday programs. I was like, <gasps> oh, I know, I know. No, but it, it was fine because you then gave me a Bible, didn't you, on my journey? And then I, I came did. to the Lord yeah. whilst I was there. And I started sending you some stuff from. You were always ministering to me, weren't you? That guy that I. The something project. The fuel project. Fuel project videos. I sent a few videos from. From, from him and, and I was initiated really into Islam at that point and so she was sending me Christian stuff and she was constantly yeah. sort of oh. ministering to me but anyway this isn't about my testimony is about you oh well it you know, <laughs> they, they intertwine them because yeah, you true. came home and you got saved while you were there and it was like oh, still you're at the airport and we're like amazing oh that? my gosh you know my baby we're going to heaven together and it was <laughs> yeah. like really I mean, it was just incredible, and um, that restoration of our relationship. And I think then we now, found the church, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Me and Piers have been looking, but then I asked my dad, who lived in America at the time, and he told me yeah, where to go. Amazing. And then we went to this church together, didn't we? And then now and it it's my a, husband in this church. A sermon about mothers and daughters and restoration, and we're like, oh my gosh, we've come to the right place. And also you know? about the possessed daughter. Oh, you and at that time, I had to go through that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah those are sort of your testimony yeah. my testimony in a short yeah but it's pretty powerful isn't it because i think we've had now we have got a deeper relationship now than we ever have ever 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 even when i was a kid you know when we know the lord yeah. you know we've got a close bond when you're with a sister in christ but we're actually mum and daughter so beautiful. yeah amazing i never even imagined that could happen <laughs> no I... Now we're a mess. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I think today was a really good atmosphere. What do you think? I'm just happy to hear that Zacchaeus came down from the tree <laughs> and Jesus has gone around his house for dinner. Fantastic <laughs> news. That's what we're on here. Yeah. I liked that bit which you pointed out about how Zacchaeus was wanting to look for Jesus, but Jesus called him first. Awesome. I love that point. When it comes to all of our testimonies, it's the the Lord that draws us to himself, isn't it? That's why we answer that call and it's his voice that speaks first. There's so many that were called by name in the Bible, but now God is using his church as his ambassadors to call people by name. So call people by name. Say Jesus is calling you whatever their name is because he is a personal God and he wants a personal relationship with every one of us. Amen. So I think I'm going to close out the vlog here and have a little bit of a break because I've been filming most days now for about four weeks and it's getting a bit intense. So I'm going to have a little break and then maybe give myself a week off and then vlog next week. Um, but until then, God bless you.